Hi. So, um, being allowed to touch a process like this that's changed the world for over a course of 40 years, there's too many stories, of course. The New Zealand story is one that I tell frequently, and it got elaborated last year. Um, frequently, people say, gee, since you've been involved with this for a long time, did you understand what it was going to become? And uh, I didn't until 1990. Uh, if you look at uh, the early papers, starting with Vannevar Bush up through the 68 paper that basically described the project that was about to be started for the ARPANET, <clears throat> it was clear those folks did understand uh, because they, the 68 paper in particular, if you don't get hung up on the details, it describes the world we have today. But I didn't get it. Uh, on the other hand, I, sh I should note, um, there's so much touting of, of uh, Vince wonderfulness. I, I think we need a little note of reality. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> Shut off the mic. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. Uh, well, actually, he has been. Uh, he hired me for my first full-time job in 1972. I was an undergraduate dropout in psychology, and uh, the UCLA uh, ARPANET project needed some help in, in uh, user support and documentation, and so I got hired for that. And a, an example of not learning from your errors, he hired me again 11 years later to work for him at MCI. So, so Vint has got some limitations in his ability to <laughs> foresee things. In spite of being involved with this for so many years, I didn't, and, and, and the wonderfulness of the capabilities were, were obvious immediately. Uh, and in fact, the ARPANET was, a, was an experiment, but it became useful so quickly that being able to conduct an experiment on the, uh, on the ARPANET uh, became a problem because everybody was using it for real work. And so they had to schedule the times when it was okay to break the ARPANET. In 1990, I finally understood what the internet was going to become, or was actually quickly becoming. Um, and I tell this anecdote frequently, and I had a chance to tell it again uh, in my first trip to New Zealand uh, last year. Um, and I was in Wellington, and it explained that in 1990, I had been uh, asked to teach a half-day TCP IP course to a collection of telephone people that were taking a week-long course at Carnegie Mellon. And so I was brought in to be the weird internet guy. And I can do that, that's easy. And uh, since this is a class, it's always good to do demonstrations. And um, so I did a gopher demonstration because the, the web wasn't really known to anybody outside of a tiny group. I don't think I had seen it yet. Uh, it was only created a year earlier. But gopher had a fairly entrenched base. It was fairly useful. Um, and somebody had laid a, a little structure on top of it over the, over the internet where you could go to a particular page and it gave you uh, uh, choices in terms of the geography of the world. So I put that up on the screen and I asked the class, okay class, where do you want to go? And somebody said, ooh, South Pacific. So we clicked on that. And somebody else yelled out, New Zealand, let's go there. So I clicked on that. And I clicked on Wellington. And then I told the class that I was no longer going to ask them for where they wanted to go because now I was interested. Because what I saw on the screen was, to me, quite striking. I saw a town council. And I clicked on that and pulled up the town council minutes of Wellington, New Zealand from the week before. If those kinds of people were going to put that kind of information on the net, everybody was going to put everything. And that was the moment when I finally understood what we were moving to. So, of course, I tell this story during my little presentation in Wellington last year. Wellington is a, is a government town, and so there's all these suits in the audience. And afterwards, uh, one guy comes up to me, and he says, um, really enjoyed that anecdote. Um, would you like to meet the guy who put the page up? So Richard Naylor turns out to be a really delightful guy, and we had dinner that night. Uh, and and he was an IT guy. He now does webcasting uh, for events. Uh, and, and the thing to me that was the most delightful about spending the evening with him is and, and the government guy was going about how uh, Richard is so modest. And my, my reaction was, Richard knows how good he is, but what he does with that is to appreciate what sorts of things can get done. The end of the evening, 
we were some distance away from my hotel. He offered to give me a ride, and I knew he had to get up very early the next morning. I said, no, no, thank, thank you, but I actually want to walk off the, the meal. And he said, I'll walk with you. And this was not early in the evening. So I said, no, I, but he really wanted to walk with me. It turned out the reason was his efforts in those days had been actually to build a very early metropolitan network around Wellington. And he said it was really quite easy because his job had to do with power lines. And the reason he wanted to walk back with me was to point to the power lines where the early internet circled Wellington. Thank you.